In Creole Parametric, you can use layers in drawings in order to manage the visibility of entities in your drawing. In part one, we covered topics like the relationship between model layers and drawing layers, and also the sources of different layers in your drawing. In this video, we're going to take a look at three topics, manually creating layers, managing the visibility of layers, and individual view control. First, let's take a look at manually creating layers. Here I am in a drawing. Let me go to the second sheet with my bill of materials. I want to create a layer for the different bomb balloons that are on this sheet. Let me jump over to the table tab because that will control what's available in my filter and I'll use that later on. So to access your layers, you can do that from the view tab. Let me jump back over to the table tab. You can also use the layer tree icon in the drawing tree or the layer tree icon in the model tree. I will click on it and by default, the layer tree is going to be docked at the bottom of your navigator. You can use this icon to drag the layer tree to its own free floating window. Let me grab the layer tree and then drag it so that it is a little bit longer. Let's take a moment to examine the different controls that you have at the top of this dialog box. Here you have some different window settings like reattaching this free floating window back to the navigator, minimizing, maximizing, and closing the layer tree. Then we can expand by level. You can also collapse all levels. And then we have a bunch of different buttons that control what's visible in our layer tree. So right now, by default, all of them are turned on. So we are seeing our shown layers, our hidden layers, our isolated layers. I'll talk more about isolate later on. Also our layer shown in hidden line, our layer items. What that means is if you expand the different levels in here, you can see the different objects that are associated to different layers and also your items on nested layers. Then we have a double arrow. This allows you to filter the non-selected layers. Also, you could clear a filter if you had one or you could filter to just the selected layers. Then we have a drop-down list for our layer operations, and then a drop-down list for our layer settings. All right, let me deselect everything. And so the first thing is to create a brand new layer. The easiest way to do that is to hold down the right mouse button over the layer tree. So I will choose new layer. And then up at the top, we can give it a name. I will call it my bomb balloons. Then we have a field for the layer ID. And this is especially helpful if you're trying to replicate AutoCAD's 0 to 255 layer numbering scheme, but otherwise you don't really need it. Then there's a button for info, and it's just go, going to open up a dialog box with text information about that layer and its visibility status. Now for our contents, well, I'm going to use my selection filter to grab the different objects that I want. Let me change to balloon. That way I can just swipe a big box over my drawing. And now I've associated all these different objects to the layer. Right now it's set to include. You could exclude items or you could select different items and then remove them manually from the layer. But I am happy with this, so I will click the OK button. And now I have my layer in my layer tree and it's still selected. I can expand it to see the layer items. And you'll notice that it has a symbol that looks just like a plane. This indicates that this is a layer that is created with objects that are manually selected as opposed to layers that are bundled together because they have the same name as layers in other different parts. Okay, let me collapse that. So that's good for my first layer. Let me repaint to deselect everything that is visible. Next, let's take a look at using rules in order to create a new layer. So this time I will hold down the right mouse button 
and let's choose new layer. And for my new layer, this one will be for my drawing table. So let me change the name to tables. And then I will go to the rules tab this time. And the first thing I usually do is go to the options drop down list and turn on all three different options. This bottom option for independent, well, that means if it's checked, it disables driving the layer by the default layer model. I want this to be independent of the model. Then we have rules enabled, and that means that I'm going to define a rule in a moment. If I create any new entities, in this case, if I create any new tables, they will be associated to this layer automatically. The associative option is for objects that already exist in the drawing that match the criteria that I'm going to establish. In other words, when I write my rule for tables, well, any existing tables will end up on the layer. So now let me go to edit rules. And by default, it's looking for dimensions. We have an attributes tab, a history tab, a status tab. The geometry tab is grayed out because we are in a drawing. But once again, I'm looking for tables. So I can go to the look for drop down list and scroll down and you can see the various different items that are available for selection. But I want to choose a drawing table. In this case, look by is now grayed out. I only have the history tab and the status tab. I'm going to use the history and set that to all. I'm going to grab all the different tables. I can preview the results. It found five different tables. I'm happy with that, so I can click on the OK button. And right now, if I go to the Contents tab, it's going to be empty. Let me click the OK button. Now that we have our Tables tab, we can see the layer items visible in here. But now I can right mouse click and hold and go to Layer Properties. And on the Contents tab, I see all the different tables that are associated. But I happen to know that there are some tables in my title block, and I don't want them in here. So I can choose to exclude those. I'll go to exclude, and let's exclude this one, and this one, and this one. Now you can see with their status, there's a little minus sign. So they're not going to be associated with this layer. So exclude, that allows you to manually remove items from the current layer. In this case, these are items that were added by a rule. So let's click the OK button. So now I've got my tables layer created. I'm happy with that one. And a third way of creating a layer is from search results. So let me close the layer tree. And this time I'm going to use a search. You can use the binoculars or the find tool down at the bottom. And I previously done a search for drawing tables a moment ago. This time I want to search for symbols. Let me go to my look for drop down list. Now I'll change to drawing symbol. And let's choose find now. In this case, there are three items. I will use the shift key to select them and then move them over to the selected items list. From the options drop down list, we have a number of different commands. And here is the command to save the query as a layer. I will choose that. And then my layer name, let me call this symbols and then type in or click the OK button and then click close. And so let's go back to our layer tree. I will use the layer tree button and we can scroll down and we can see our symbols layer and we can see the symbols that are in there. And it's got the symbol next to this particular layer that indicates that this layer was created by virtue of a rule, in this case, objects that match this list here, or excuse me, the criteria that they are a drawing symbol. So that's how you can manually create your layers. Now let's take a look at some of the different operations you can do. Probably the easiest way to access functionality for your layer is right clicking on the layer name. We have a number of different commands. Let's go to the delete layer command. So delete layer gets rid of the layer. 
just be aware that deleting a layer does not delete the entities that are associated to that particular layer. It just gets rid of the layer itself. Then below that, we have the rename command. We've already taken a look at the layer properties command in order to bring open the dialog box. And let's right click once more. A couple more commands to take a look at. Select items from in here. And then there is a, another uh, option that we have in here and it's grayed out and it's activated. Let me create a brand new layer in this particular drawing. I'm gonna right mouse click, let's choose new layer. And I'm not gonna bother changing the name and I'm not gonna bother associating any entities to this particular layer. I'm just gonna click on the okay button. So right now we have a completely empty layer and I'm gonna right mouse click on it and choose activate. And so what this means is that any new entities that I create are automatically going to be associated to this layer by default. Let's go to, let's go to sheet four. I'm gonna to go to an empty space and I'm going to add in one of my notes. Let's go to the annotate tab. I'm going to create a note and this note is going to be unattached. In other words, flat to screen. I will pick a location for it and then let's choose note from file and that way I can grab one of my default notes, like my proprietary note. And so it is created. Now, if I go to this particular layer, you'll notice it's got a little green diamond next to it. I'm gonna right mouse click on it and go to layer properties. That note that I just created was automatically associated to this layer because it is the active layer. So activating a layer means that any new entities that are created in the drawing will be associated to this layer. Okay, let's click the cancel button and deselect and repaint so that nothing is still selected. So now that we have created a bunch of different layers, well, we can apply operations to those layers. For example, I can right click on the layer and here we have the hide command and hey, that layer is no longer visible. I can't see the entities that are associated with it. If I right mouse click on it again, well, I can go to the show command. And that way I see those different items. Let's go back over to the bomb tab. And if I go to my bomb balloons layer and then to my operations dropdown, here we have some other different commands. Here I've got hidden line. That really doesn't make any sense for these different objects. But then there's an isolate command. And I'll be honest, I almost never use this command. It means, hey, let me see this layer and this layer only. You'll notice that, hey, my drawing table went away because that drawing table is associated to another layer. Let me go to my operations dropdown list. Just change that to show. And so it's no longer isolated, which means my other different layers can be visible. That's why my bomb table is now shown again. And for the last thing to take a look at in this video, you can manage the visibility of individual drawing views separately from the rest of the drawing. So for example, let's say I've got this particular view and I want this particular view, the top view, not to have the same visibility settings as this other layer. Here we have a drop down list, and by default, it is showing the top model and it's showing all the different components that are associated with this particular drawing. You can, manip you can manipulate the layers of individual models associated with the drawing, but in between the individual models, and the top uh, layer, which is for the drawing, you can do it for the active model or your individual drawing views. And so in this case here, I forget which view that was, so I can use the pick icon to select an individual view, this particular view. And now we are looking at the layer status of the top view and it act, actually made all these other different layers that were hidden before now visible. 
if I were to turn on some of my datum displays here, well, you can see that those different objects are now visible in the drawing view. So you can control the visibility settings of individual views differently from the rest of the drawing. But let's say that you no longer want this particular view to have different layer settings compared to the rest of the drawing. Well, what we can do is go to the Layer Operations drop-down list, and the command right down here at the bottom is Drawing Dependent. Make the view display dependent on a drawing display. So I will choose that, and we get a confirmation window. Do you really want the layer status of the drawing view to be dependent on the layer status of the drawing? In this case, I do. I will choose yes, and you can see it's doing some thinking. And it changed back to the drawing as the active object in which all those different layers were hidden. We no longer see the datum planes in that top view on the drawing sheet. So there you have it. That's how you can manually create layers, manage the visibility of your different layers, and manage individual views separately from the rest of the drawing.